Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. Today we are taking a picture tour of the Father Flanagan house at Boys Town in Omaha, Nebraska. The Father Flanagan House Museum is the former residence of Boys Town founder Father Edward Flanagan. The house was constructed in 1927 and was Father Flanagan's home until 1941 when he moved to the rectory of Dowd Memorial Chapel. The Flanagan House's decor and furnishings interpret the year 1929 when Father Flanagan would have been in residence. No flashy intro today. I recorded an intro probably 10 different times, didn't like any of them, so decided today we're just going to take the picture tour of Father Flanagan's house. <laughs> One of the, as far as I'm concerned, main attractions here is Father Flanagan's desk. Um, it is made up of more than a quarter million pieces of wood from practically every part of the world, 39 kinds in all. It weighs 320 pounds and took more than three years to build. It was a labor of love, a gift from the citizens of Boys Town to their protector and mentor. This was no ordinary desk. It belonged to Father Edward Flanagan. Father Flanagan's desk began as a project in the manual training department class of Mr. John Thomas. It was started on August of 1936, and originally the boys hoped they could make it by the end of the year so they could give it to Father Flanagan as a Christmas gift. While working on the desk, the boys hid the project so it would be a total surprise, but the boys soon discovered that goal was not realistic. In fact, the project would take more than three years and the labor of 20 boys to complete. Finally, at Christmas in 1939, the boys delivered their special heartfelt present to the beloved priest. The desk became one of Father Flanagan's most prized possessions. He understood the dedication and hard work that went into and he also knew how much pride the boys took in doing the job the right way. Mr. Thomas said at the time that most of the woods used in the desk were donated by friends of Boys Town. He also said the equipment donated to the home by various manufacturers made the construction possible. In many ways, the desk represents what Father Flanagan stood for and believed in. He believed the boys who left his care should be prepared to be productive members of society. Because of that, he wanted the boys to learn a skill or trade, and he believed with proper upbringing and love, success would follow. Today, as in those early years, Boys Town provides its students, both boys and girls, the opportunity to learn job skills that will help them after they leave the home. With a growing need for skilled tradesmen, Boys Town has expanded its career readiness center and now offer classes in construction, welding, small engine repair, health occupations, and many other trade and skilled labor areas. Every year, thousands of visitors admire Father Flanagan's desk, as they too were his former residents at Father Flanagan's house in the village of Boys Town. The desk is a timeless reminder of one of the most famous projects ever undertaken by the youth of Boys Town, and of the love the boys <clears throat> and the love of the boys decades past had for the man who gave them a new start in life. One of the people that came out of these programs, he had learned how to be a photographer. His name was Cecil W. Stoughton. <clears throat> Stoughton was born in Okaloosa, Iowa on January 18th, 1920. During World War II, he was assigned to the first motion picture unit he was captain in the United States Army Signal Corps when he was assigned to the White House Army Signal Agency. Stoughton's behind-the-scenes pictures of John and Jacqueline and their children in their public and personal life were pivotal in shaping the public's view of the U.S. First Family. He took more than 8,000 pictures of the family, spanning the 34-month period beginning with Kennedy's inauguration, and ending with his assassination. Stoughton took 
the only photograph ever published showing John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, and Marilyn Monroe together. Stoughton was present at the motorcade at which Kennedy was assassinated and was subsequently the only photographer on board Air Force One when Lyndon Baines Johnson was sworn in as the next president. Stoughton knew it was tasteless but suggested a photograph needed to be made of the history-making moment. And I think we should have it. Kenneth T. Walsh even agreed and said of Stoughton's picture that Air Force One has become associated with incredibly powerful images and a symbol of the country and a reminder of history. The most famous, his photograph, the most famous photo ever taken aboard a presidential aircraft depicts Johnson raising his hand in oath as he stood between his wife, Lady Bird Johnson, and still blood-spattered Jacqueline Kennedy. Stoughton recounted this event in his service as White House photographer during Johnson's first two years in office, in an oral history contributed to the Lyndon Baines Johnson Library and Museum. From 1967 to 1973, Stoughton served as chief still photographer of the National Park Service. In 2008, Stoughton appeared on the television series Antiques Roadshow as part of an LBJ centennial where he recounted his story and presented prints of his photographs from his personal collection, including the print of his photograph of Johnson being sworn in that Johnson had signed, and a photograph of Johnson in the Oval Office as he signed the photo of his swearing in. All the items together appraised for $75,000. Two years after his death, a large collection of his photographs was sold at auction It included the picture of Johnson's inauguration and fetched $151,000. Stoughton appeared as a contestant on the May 29, 1987 episode of the game show Classic Concentration on the date that Kennedy would have turned 70 years old. He died at Merritt Island, Florida and was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. I hope you've enjoyed this picture tour through the Father Flanagan's home.